Good evening and welcome to our Saturday news update. The government plans to start allowing people to visit their relatives at elderly residential services as of the second week of June. This is according to Minister for Health Paul Balban, who spoke at today's press conference from number six, along with Minister for Civil Contingencies Samantha Sacramento. The plan is that the first visitors will be permitted as of the second week of June, whereby one visitor per day wearing PPE will be allowed to visit between 4 and 6 p.m. By or around the 6th of July, two visitors will be allowed to visit together, wearing PPE between 4 and 8 in the evening. Normal visiting is expected to resume by the 20th of July. These timelines are subject to change as per our conditions for unlocking, should we encounter any increase in COVID-19 cases. As always, we wholeheartedly trust the advice as provided by our clinical teams at ERS, who always have the best interests of our ERS residents in mind. In response to GBC questions, Mr Balban said the government was maintaining supply chains open to ensure there would be adequate personal protective equipment for visitors, and said best practice and common sense would guide how visitors are instructed to use PPE, also emphasising the ongoing importance of public health advice on hand washing, social distancing and using tissues to catch, bin and kill the virus. It is our job and our role to ensure that we have adequate stocks of PPE for everyone um, and be very aware of how things um, can change. We have to procure at, at the right moments in time. We have, to rem we have to be very careful that we don't run stocks low. We have, to keep, we have our targets, we have our maximum supplies and our minimum supplies whereby we, we will reorder. So it's keeping our, our contacts and suppliers open. We try to maintain as many supply chains open links as possible in case one should fail that we have, we have um, alternative um, sources. Um, but it's something that we need to obviously take care of. Um, over time, we will be requiring less and less PPE. But again, there could be a surge in the future and we need to be, need to be ready. But as always, we follow public health advice on when we should wear PPE and how we should wear PPE. Everyone within the GHA is very well um, versed on how they wear their PPE, how to, how to um, put the PPE on, how to remove um, their PPE, because there is a, it's a very skillful process. It is not simple um, to wear PPE and remove it carefully and safely, but the experts in the, in, in the GG know, you know how to do that very professionally. To actually go into, this, into a theatre scenario, into an operating theatre, there are very specific techniques. I'm talking of the extreme cases of a patient who's COVID positive and the staff need to protect themselves. Um, there is so much you know, one can do, so there are different levels of, of PP and we have to be very reasonable and to what level. We can't expect people who are going to go visiting you know, their families at ERS, at Mount Avenia, or whatever, to to wear you know, a suit as if they were going to go into an operating theatre. So obviously the staff, every time you go into Montalvania, there's a staff there, just as the, the staff at St. Bernard's Hospital, who will ask you to wash your hands, to, to um, use a, a disinfectant for your hands, um, sanitizer. then they will take your, your temperature and they will give you a mask and tell you how to use it. So best practices is what is used and common sense. So the staff will guide people. Um, but of course, it's not only how you wear your PPE, it's what you do when your PPE is, is on. I mean, if, if you play around with it, if you if you bring it down to be able to talk properly, if, even if you're drinking water and, you, and, and you, if, if you play and with a mask, for example, then obviously it, it, it affects it. But again, anyway, I think it's something we've been reasonable. The Minister for Health gave today's COVID-19 statistics, showing that Gibraltar has just two active cases, with one having recovered since yesterday. As of this morning at 8am, the total number of swabs taken so far was 5,060. There are 182 results pending, and the total results received to date is 4,878. We have a total of 4,613 negative test results with 147 confirmed cases and two active cases, which is one down from yesterday. We therefore now have 145 recovered cases. Our hospital stat statistics this morning are as follows. In the last 24 hours, there have been a total of 52 attendances to A and E. Of these... Five had symptoms that could be related to COVID-19. There have been no admissions to John Ward, which is our COVID ward, in the last 24 hours. There was one admission to COVID CCU overnight, which has resulted negative and who will be transferred 
to a clean world later on. Once again, we have no suspected or confirmed COVID cases within the hospital. A total of 2,270 swabs have been taken via our drive through facility and we are now able to turn around test results within two hours. We have carried out a total of 1,803 tests locally. Mr Balban also set out a timeline for the return of clinical activity at the hospital. As the GHA starts to plan our restart of clinical activity, we are initially focusing on screening services to detect any cancer or other serious condition where symptoms may not be apparent. I specifically refer to mammography, cervical screening, colon cancer screening, aortic aneurysm screening and well person screening. However, I wish to assure our community that urgent cancer referrals have never stopped at all during this time. As of the 22nd of May, GHA unlocking stage 2 of our GHA restart commences with patients who are on the early recall list for screening being invited for their screening investigations, including endoscopies, mammograms, smear tests and ultrasounds. GHA unlocking stage 3 on or around the 12th of June will see the, com the commencement of routine non-urgent screening of the healthy population. This will initially take place observing the rules of social distancing by ensuring gaps between appointment times to minimise the chances of patients mixing in waiting areas. At GHA unlocking stage 4, on or around the 3rd of July, we will commence full lists of patient screening tests because at that point, if we have managed to remain COVID-free or have very low infection rates, we will be in a great position to speed up and hopefully start to regain ground on any waiting lists that have developed. Surgery will resume as soon as we can ensure that it will be fully safe to bring someone back into the hospital environment. We would not want any complications that could result in grave harm for a procedure that could wait a little longer. And once we, we get past um, the, the stages and we, we're back to standard, back to where we should be, then we need to start concentrating and looking at how we're going to reduce our waiting lists. And, and we have been planning and thinking about it. We're still in, in consultation phase with, with all the professionals, but there are ways and that we intend to reduce wait lists. We now have to you know, try to gain ground. Um, and, and, and it's possible. Um, we may need to look at, at hours of work. We may need to look at, at a number of, of different um, things. But what we, obviously what won't be acceptable is for us to run waiting lists which are longer than they were um, when, we, when we locked down. Obviously, the, initially, it will be inevitable. Um, but over time, we expect that we will, we will be able to um, catch up and bring our service back to that service that we are, we're used to and that we, obviously the population expects. Minister for Civil Contingencies, Samantha Sacramento, said teams had been established to ensure that Gibraltar can follow the timeline set out for unlocking, with guidelines also set to be published. Measures to enable the unlocking of the lockdown are well underway, and the teams have spent long hours this week and have also worked today since very early this morning as we continue to formulate the rules, guidance and advice. Always, of course, based on the advice given to us by the Director of Public Health. In the coming days, we shall be publishing guidelines for the sectors so that they can resume within the parameters in a safe way. Teams have been set up to ensure that we can give operational effect to the timeline while ensuring that we do so safely. As you know, the answer to effectively unlocking the rock will very much hinge on our test, track and trace strategy. We will continue the targeted swabbing of frontline staff and thanks to the new public health lab, we will be able to test up to 300 swabs a day within four hours. Ms Sacramento said the government's geographic information systems had been a useful tool in decision making and will aid the contact tracing process, which will form part of the strategy to track the virus and isolate those at risk. This system is a tool that offers a way to communicate geographic data in a meaningful way through the use of interactive maps and infographics. The GIS system and information dashboards record in near real time and can be an invaluable tool in responding to a crisis and predicting new outbreaks. In the coming weeks and months, 
we will continue to monitor and assess the longer-term impact of COVID-19. The GIS system will be very useful to assess areas and individuals at greater risk through tools such as contact tracing and the population modelling. This is a tool that has been entirely developed internally, and I would like to thank Dr. Liesel Messilio for her drive in tailor-making this tool for the pandemic and all her teams who have worked in solidarity to make this possible in a short period of time. The government ministers emphasised the lessons learned during the COVID crisis, advising caution and the importance of a healthy lifestyle. Going forward, we must manage how we live with this virus being among us, and we must do so with great care and caution. The methodology to give effect to how we unlock from the lockdown must be a careful one. We must still have precautions in place and unlocking will, will entail restrictions. A lot of common sense will also be required and we should not let down our guard. There are so many positives that have resulted from COVID-19. Our environment is so much cleaner, our air, our air quality so much better. So many people have used this time positively to exercise, to walk, to jog and to cycle. COVID has planted the seeds for a healthier future. It has made us look deeper into ourselves. With this one of the last daily press conferences, Samantha Sacramento also thanked all those involved in the effort to tackle COVID-19, as well as all who had contributed by following public health advice. Now the Transport Advisory Committee has met to discuss the recently announced road closures and restrictions which come into operation on the 1st of June. According to the Minister for Transport, the comments from members of the forum were very positive. He added they all welcomed the initiative. He said this forms part of the government's ongoing consultation process. Vijay Daryanani said this project will be good for Gibraltar to promote more sustainable forms of transport and healthier lifestyles. Now, the Commander British Forces Gibraltar says in the coming days there will be changes at Devil's Tower Camp, Four Corners and as well at all MOD Gibraltar workplaces in order to prepare for people returning to work from lockdown. Commodore Tim Henry was referring to new hygiene and social distancing measures that take stock of public health advice relating to COVID-19. He said St. Christopher's School will remain closed for the time being, asking the public to look at the government's plan to exit lockdown, or at least the indicative timeline, to understand what should be possible and when. The timeline is indicative. The times will change if they need to. But next week, all being well, we will be able to go out more. Some of the legal impediments will be taken away from us. We will be able to meet in larger groups socially, whilst maintaining our social distance, whilst ensuring that our hygiene is of the utmost standard. In DTC, in Four Corners, we will introduce changes to how we interact there as well to reflect these new rules. In our workplaces, we are working out how to bring people back and those changes will come in next week or we will start to do the work that needs to address some of the shortcomings that may be there because of COVID. St Christopher's will remain closed because of course it is not a year two or year six provider, but the Gibraltar schools will also soon be opening and our children that are in those year groups will go back. All of this is good. Keep going. Don't mess it up now at this weekend Keep looking forward to the future. The UK House of Lords shadow spokesperson for Home Affairs has questioned why Gibraltar is included in the UK's 14-day quarantine proposals for visitors when France is excluded. Lord Rosser added that The Rock has had no coronavirus deaths. He addressed the House of Lords, questioning when the advice setting out the 14-day quarantine proposal would be published, adding that there was no case for it previously and 18 million passengers have entered the UK since January. The query on Gibraltar was not addressed by the Parliamentary Undersecretary for the Department of Transport, Baroness Veer of Norberton, although on the issue of quarantine, she said the scheme is still being finalised. Baroness Veer said the final details have not yet been announced, including whether there will be any exemptions. And a black vulture has been released from the top of the rock following its rehabilitation at the Gons Raptor Rescue Unit. The unit fed and looked after the bird, which was underweight and weak. It had been spotted by a father and son during a boat ride. Black vultures are one of the heaviest and largest raptors in the world, 
Though they are not very common in the area, numbers are slowly increasing. Gon says that in Spain the population is now at more than 2,000 pairs. And that's all from the news team on this Saturday evening. Thanks for watching this news update on GBC Television. You can keep up with the latest on our website gbc.gi and our Facebook and Twitter pages. From everyone at Broadcasting House, stay safe and good night.